guys, Juan from Blueprint PC here, and today we're doing something a little different. We're all stuck kind of indoors. I mean, a lot of go out in your backyard and do a couple of random things, but with uh, the whole lockdown, stay at home, whatever lottie dotty stuff you want to call it, uh, we're trying something new. I'm trying to find out another way to give you guys some extra content. Uh, so today we're doing episode one of Tech Lounge, and what that's going to be is a fairly simple one. It's going to be less like edited, so it's going to be crappier than usual. Um, but I'm going to talk about a few tech topics, and speaking of that too, if you want to put some suggestions or have anything that you want discussed or want some more info on, put it in the comments below. Um, and then we're going to do a quick game review, sort of, or like a suggestion, like what you should play while you're stuck indoors right now. And then some small item reviews. There's a few things that I've acquired over time that I've wanted to do reviews on, but I didn't think they really like warranted a full video. So I'm going to do some quick things on that. Today I got something I just got. Um, but yeah, so that's it. And yeah, so that's what Tech Lounge is going to be. I'm going to try to do one every other week, maybe more if I can. Um, but we'll see. Outside of that, welcome. I'm Juan. You're watching my channel, Blueprint PC. And if you're into tech stuff, how-to videos, reviews, and things of that nature, or this whole Tech Lounge thing sounds interesting to you, please hit that like and subscribe button. Um, outside of that, I've got kind of like my little notes here. It's going to be, again, it's going to be more laid back. It's going to be less process, less editing, more raw, just me rambling on um, like an idiot. So, fook it. Let's do it. So, uh, first concept, or not concept, first topic that I'm going to be on today is keyboard and mouse versus controller. And I'm not talking about which one's better, but in a gaming atmosphere. So... If you're online and you're playing a game, whatever game you want, whether it's uh, Rocket League or pick a random first-person shooter, Minecraft, whatever it is, it's a question of, is it fair to play together? Some games you might feel yes, some games not. And that's kind of where I just want to give you guys my two cents on it, give you some food for thought. And again, with all these topics, blow up the comments below. Let me know what you think, you know, have your own discussions, be nice about it, because everybody's going to have their opinion, and that's, remember, we're all allowed to have our opinions. It's our opinions. It's, this is subjective. There's not a factual fight here. It's just, what do we think? So for this one, so, like what I put here, so, for, to me, it depends, one, on your viewpoint. So, controllers tend to be better suited for, like, racing games, um, fighting games even, uh, platformers, things like that, where, you know, Small, quick muscle movements are great and fast. Where on a, on a keyboard, you're having to like stretch out and do weird things. So like, Rainbow Six Siege, love that game. Drives me freaking crazy. He makes me want to put my fist through desk, keyboard, monitor, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, played it in a console first and foremost. That's where I found the game. I, I played it in beta on Xbox, and you know, there's so many things like vaulting and running and diving through things. Like the actual physical movements are so much more fluid with a controller. And sitting with chucking a grenade really fast and things like that. However, being a you know, you know, again, I've been a console and PC player my entire life. I've kind of merged from the two over time and gone in waves, and now I'm definitely more PC only for the moment, but I'm not knocking console, I still have an Xbox One X. So anywho. But so movements and stuff like that are more fluid, they're more, you know, natural, it's quicker. But then Cool, I can jump over that wall faster, but then when I'm trying to potato shoot you and I'm doing a cookie cutter around your body with a joystick, that sucks. So, but where keyboard mouse is like flick, 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 boom, 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 there's like five people dead right there. So, it, it depends. You know, there's there's definitely a pro and a con to both. And even like with um, real-time strategy games, RTS, I find a mouse and keyboard much better because it's just, you grab it, you go, oh, hey, boom, you scroll and highlight and just move things around really fast and you're not being fumbling again with a joystick or a D-pad or whatever it is, regardless of the system. Um, but in games like, uh, for Switch, like Legend of Zelda, I couldn't imagine really playing that with a keyboard and mouse. I'm sure it's fine. Um, I'm not a fan of platformers with keyboard and mouse, like GTA is another one. Played that on console first, obviously, because it came out on console first. Um, Dude, driving is so much better with a controller. So much better. The sensitivities, the throttle, everything else. But mind you, the running around movements in this game for me, especially with shooting and that for a third person shooter, is way better with a keyboard and mouse. So now that we've kind of generalized that, what do you think about fairness online? So I think when there's a time where something's restricted, like one, there's, there's two things. If you're on console and there's crossplay between PC, 
PC can use either. They can, you, you, can, you can use an Xbox controller, I wish I would have grabbed one to talk about this, would have been smart for like, hey, look at this. Um, but Xbox, you know, you're stuck. Or PlayStation 4, you're stuck. You're stuck with a controller. Yes, some games are getting keyboard and mouse support, but we'll get back to that. So <clears throat> if you're on PC and you have a choice between keyboard and mouse, but then you're on console and you only have controller and you can't opt for that, I do think that is unfair. Now, if you're on both platforms and you get to choose between either, by all means, game on. Like, bring it on. So that way you can be player's choice at that point in time. You know, if, if the person on PlayStation is like, you know what, I suck with a keyboard and mouse, I'd rather, you know, use a controller, they can do so. And same thing with PC, because PC, you get the choice now. I know some people who still play FPS games on PC with a controller, and that kind of weirds me out, because I'm kind of like, you're just weird. But hey, you know what, I'm sure some of you guys out there do it too, and... It is what it is, you know. Like I said, I with GTA, I tried playing keyboard and grabbing a controller when I was driving, and that became a hassle. So I just learned to drive with the keyboard, and it's fine. I'm not as um, intricate or precise with a keyboard for driving, but I've learned to make do. So it is what it is. I, I'm sufficient enough for that game. If I was playing a racer, like a straight just racing game, yeah, I would use keyboard and mouse. Well, not keyboard and mouse, sorry, controller. So. But, yeah, and that's kind of where, you know, as long as I think it's fair for both sides, if, as long as one platform is not restricted to one format for their playing experience for controls, whether it's keyboard, mouse, or controller, as long as I think both options are available to both platforms, I think it's fair. Outside of that, I don't. Because, you know what, especially with FPS games, PC has a strong advantage due to these. Not this one in particular, because this one kind of sucks, but it's good for just, you know, dumb stuff but the keyboard and mouse in general is in my opinion a winner for fps games if it's racing games and there's cross plat then dude i think controller beats it all day long on keyboard and that's just my opinion i'm sure somebody's out there who's a freaking expert for you know hard right turn and you know they're amazing and it is what it is i'm just not i'm not a keyboard racer i'm a controller racer so yeah so that's the first topic so again i'm going to try to this will be a little bit more cleaned up as these progress because we'll kind of get used to the format a little bit here maybe make a little tweaks and adjustments but that was uh that so let me know what you guys think i'm just curious because it's one of those stupid things that it came up where some people are talking about you know we we're playing a current game and it's cross-platform between multiple consoles and it was just like you know we were just curious like well that kind of sucks because we can murder these people these are probably the people only people we're beating is because they're on console all the pc players are chewing us up so all right the next one. So I'm sure everybody knows with the current reasonings that we're all stuck indoors or mostly stuck indoors, um, you know, that whole thing is kind of shooken up the industry for tech related stuff and every other industry just for that matter. Like pretty much every industry's screwed right now in some form or fashion. So there's a big topic that's gone on. I've seen a lot of the big YouTubers talk about it, about Oh, buy your stuff now. Don't buy your stuff now. Don't be stupid. Be stupid. And it's just like, okay, we'll back and forth. And I'm going to throw my two cents in there. And again, you guys, by all means, can comment on it. And, you know, let me know what you think. And I'm going to tell you what my thought is and kind of give you some backing as to why I feel this way. So, um, should, you buy should you buy parts now or not? So, well, yes and no. If you're upgrading, I would say no. And here's the reason why. Unless you're like defined, like I only have a certain set of money and I need to spend it now, then when my grandma's gonna take it away, then no. I wouldn't spend it right now. Um, so if you're upgrading, I wouldn't spend the money. Now if you need something, if you need hard drive space or more RAM to accomplish something, then sure buy stuff because you know what like i'm actually at the point right now too where i'm running out of hard drive space on mine and i just bought a new freaking hard drive a two terabyte one i don't know a couple months ago and i'm just like well the hard drive that i had for my video storage it's just about full i bought the two terabyte one for game storage so now i need more so and that's where it's kind of like where i try to share my personal experience with you guys because I would love to upgrade in some form or fashion. I mean, right now, shit, the freaking NVIDIA and AMD, if things weren't the way they were globally, 
would have probably released all their new stuff now, but they haven't because, or at least talked about it. But you know what? Guess what? Shit happens. So the other reason why I say don't buy anything now is because new stuff is coming out later this year. And with that, you might have buyers more. It's like, hey, I just bought a 2080 Ti for $1,100. And now the 3080 Ti or the 5900 XT or whatever they're gonna be called comes out. And let's say they're both 900 bucks because you know there's gonna be some price, you know, competition now that AMD's getting into that freaking upper, you know, the heavyweight freaking GPU market. So now you spend 1120 Ti and it's probably gonna be like whatever the two highest fighting cards are gonna be are probably gonna be, no lie, 20 to 30 percent faster than that most likely. I mean, but regardless, and they're gonna be cheaper probably. Maybe. I'll get more into that here too. Uh, so I don't recommend upgrading right now because even, you know, there's so much stuff that was supposed to come out this year and most likely will come out later this year. And you may have buyer's remorse for what you buy now because something better came out later. Now, if you're like, I don't care, I don't want the new stuff, I want, like, let's say you want a 3700X uh, AMD, Ryzen 7, right? Well, guess what? If you wait till later this year, and let's say if Ryzen comes out with a 4700X, guess what's going to be cheaper? That 3700X that you were talking about buying. So that's one thing to keep in mind as the new stuff comes out, the old stuff goes on sale. Because trust me, last year I bought my 2700X um, in March. And when the 3000 stuff came out, it went from a $300 chip down to freaking under 200 So literally in a six month span it was like gotcha bitch and it was like damn it so yeah be aware of that just when new stuff comes out the price is going to go down so on the older stuff not the new stuff obviously let's see what else did i say that i want to make sure i tell you guys yeah new stuff will come out so again price may vary but even then too there's a few other things with that too so i am referencing what would be considered like a normal market there is the possibility where people are saying right now, because of all the global shakeup, that prices are gonna climb up because of supply and demand. Now, truth, that may occur. But now here's the other side of this too. Right now, the economy globally is going down. People are buying less. So what happens when people buy less? Sales pop up, because they need to bring people's money back in the door. So you're thinking supply and demand is gonna cause prices to ramp up, but the economy is bringing prices down because they still need to sell stuff and nobody's able to afford it. Or you're thinking, you know, I'm holding on to my bucks, but then if you know there's a good enough sale, they might be like, well, shit, I'm just gonna buy this because it's an amazing deal. So prices may go up. It's still possible with supply and demand, even though supposedly that the, the, the core industry for tech is starting to climb back up. Um, prices may go down because the economy's unfortunately on the downturn and you know these businesses need to make their money so they're going to turn around and start cutting their profit margins smaller just to keep stuff flowing out the door but even then too now you combine the two guess what happens they might just stay flat right in the middle because of both pro and con you know of affecting the price range so who knows um this kind of falls true same for the used market and that's kind of what i was wondering about a lot of people are talking about you know used parts like that if you can find a steal again I don't think you should put yourself in a bind, especially right now. If economically, if you're having troubles and hardships because of finances due to the economy the way it is right now, don't buy shit. Unless, like I said, unless you absolutely need it, and that's more of a need like, I need this to function for work if I'm working from home or something along those lines. Outside of that, deal with whatever you're working with now. Whatever it is, it, it may suck, but just deal as long as you can. The whole, this is one of those hardships in life we get to talk about when we're, you know, grandparents and, you know, things are sagging to the ground, like our ears. Um, but used parts is the same fashion. New stuff's gonna come out later this year, most likely, hopefully, and that's gonna one when those new items get bought, you're gonna see the new well, the used market get flooded with all these newer items, you know, 2070s and 2060s because somebody got the 3070, 3060, whatever it is. So you're gonna see people passing stuff down, shuffling out, and even then you might see a lot more 10 series card flood the market. And you might be able to buy a 2080 Ti, not 2080 series, sorry, 1080 Ti for like 300 bucks later this year, possibly, or early next year because of that. Yes, that's a ways off, but 
you know, it's one of those things where if you're comfortable where you're at now, like I said, don't upgrade unless you have to. So, but the same thing's gonna affect the used market. If prices go up later this year, if you start to see new prices climbing, used prices are gonna follow suit as well. So just be aware of that. It's, they reflect each other because if new, if new stuff's competitive and they're, you know, pushing stuff out the door, it's gonna be the same effect. So that's like when um, AMD started becoming more competitive, AMD had, uh, Nvidia had become more competitive, and the used market didn't quite reflect that yet, and they're still wanting five, six hundred dollars for cards that really probably shouldn't be right now. But as right now we're kind of in a weird spot, so I can't even really judge the market right now. But six months ago, the used market was a little inflated and it was starting to come back down. Now we're kind of in a weird period. So, but yeah, that's just the rambling I wanted to talk to you guys about tech stuff, whatever, like I said, again, if you got some ideas, things you want to hear more about, slap them in the comments below. I'll try to talk about it. Can't guarantee I can talk about everything, but I'll do my best. Um, like I said, I'll do like an item review. This one's going to be kind of crappy, but it's one of those things where just for me, I just thought it was kind of neat. Um, and it was a really good example of something. So yes, it's a black container, but this is actually a Amazon basics. Nintendo Switch case, and no, there's no sponsors here. I'm not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I don't have enough subscribers or views or anything of that nature to even be considered sponsored. So, I ordered one of these off of Amazon because um, I was looking at Switch cases so I can take it around with me if I'm going to like certain events or whatever, and I just want to have my Switch with me, um, or even just back and forth to work, like while my my lunch break or something like that. Even though now I work from home, so I don't need this, but I ordered this before all this happened. Um, I like this because all those soft-sided ones there's still room for it to dimple and crush and impact. And yes, I'm sure with enough force, this can probably break. I'm sure if you run over the car, but who knows, maybe not. Uh, it's hard plastic for the most part. It's got rubberized edges on it. This is hard, smooth plastic. Um, I'll get to the interior and this is why I like this. And I will say this, um, when you shake this compared to those soft-sided ones, there's no rattle on the inside. There's no, you can't feel your switch shaking around, which is all those vibrations and shakes and judders are opportunities for something to break and rattle and get damaged. So uh, one thing I do like is this is a push release lock. So it springs back. So if you accidentally flick it over, it gets rubbed in a bag, it's mostly just gonna return back to lock position. So, but yeah, so obviously me just hitting it there and shaking it around my switch is inside and it's perfectly fine and dandy just in case you're curious yeah see it works my wife probably sees it now and goes why did you pound the switch um but so the top here it's got cutouts for the joysticks and this is all foam this bottom is a little weird it's just it's like it's a rubberized kind of stuff going on but it's divoted for the L and R buttons and stuff like that. So it's, it's just all a really good solid material. And right here is just, they give you a little like pouch thing for putting games, like the hard the little cards in. Um, I mean, it works fine for that. I mean, yeah, it holds the game. I don't like that in general. Just, I think, I don't know. I just don't like ever putting things in like this cheap little plastic sleeves. Uh, but a, again, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just, I'm just not a fan of that type. But you can hold eight games. Again, this is all foam. So, and it supports it very well. And you can see there, there's the locking mechanism. So, but yeah. And like I said, like, look, like, like you're hearing that, like it stays so solid and firm in there. And it's under 20 bucks. I got it for 15, um, cause it was on sale. I literally watched it the first time I saw it was a little before Christmas and it was on sale for 14.99. Um, the normal price is 20 bucks on that. And I waited again until I saw it for 15 bucks and I was like, Boom, mine, and I purchased it and ordered it. And yeah, so cheers to that. Like I said, we're keeping this one a little bit more laid back. Um, outside of that, every episode, I'm gonna try and recommend a game, and it's gonna, I'm gonna try to recommend games that are cheap, maybe on sale. I don't like the sale factor so much because then if by the time the video gets out or by the time you see it, it's no longer relevant for the pricing. Um, but I'm gonna try to aim to keep things 20 bucks or less most likely, um, even though right now, just a side note, Metro Exodus for I think two more days is only $20 on Steam, so keep that in mind, but that's not the game. The game I'm actually talking about this week is Call of Duty Warzone. 
not so much the Modern Warfare whole game, but Warzone, because it's free 99 and you can't really beat the price. It sucks because it takes up a butt ton of storage space because it takes up like 100 gigs or something stupid like that. I honestly don't remember. Um, I had the room to spare, so I just hit OK. But just note it is still pretty big. Um, if you already have Modern Warfare, then it's only like, I think, an additional 20 gigs on top of that. But it makes you install the whole game, uh, essentially. Um, I'll give you the downsides right off the rip. One, it's going to bug you every four seconds. Not really, but every time you get in the menu screen, it's going to be like, hey, upgrade to buy the full game for 60 bucks or whatever their current pricing is. Um, I haven't played the Modern Warfare game itself. Uh, I heard the campaign was decent. Um, I haven't been a fan of Call of Duty like multiplayer in a while. Now I had Black Ops 4 and I loved Blackout mode. Um, I did play some multiplayer in there. Um, I just like multiplayer with more of, a, of an objective than hey I got more kills than you. Um, one, I'm not that great unless I really, really grind it out until I like get fluid with the game. Um, but like that's why I like Siege, Battlefield, things like that, things that have an alternative objective. And I don't play the team deathmatch modes. I just play like bomb or uh, secure area for Siege and like Conquest or Rush or something like that for Battlefield. Um, but this one's nice. I like Battle Royale games. Um, like I said, I like Blackout, like PUBG. Um, not a big fan of Fortnite, sorry to tell you that. Um, I just like more realistic graphics. And that, But, I mean, mind you, at least for certain games. I love cutesy stuff, too, so it really just depends on the game and what I'm doing. Um, but for Modern Warfare, that's the biggest downside. It's going to try to sell you the whole game every once in a while. The Blackout mode itself allows for singles and three squad member teams. Um, allegedly, I've seen a lot of things online where they're going to do duos and four-man squads and stuff of that nature. Hopefully that comes out soon because I have a group of friends that we like to play with online. Right now it's only three players. It kind of blows. Um, but the game itself overall is really good. It looks gorgeous. Uh, it's very outdoors. There's a lot of buildings that are intricate. You can go inside them, which is nice. But it's a huge map. There's 150 players online. And again, it's free 99. I don't want to ruin a lot of surprises for you, but that is my recommendation for this episode. So, yeah. Go out there. Give it a try. Check out some trailers on it and see what you guys think. Outside of that, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Let me know what you think in the... Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and hit that like and subscribe button if you found this at all remotely not horrible.